Welcome to another edition of the Franklin Community High School Career Exploration Project. We have with us today Patrick McGuire. Patrick is the Executive Director of Resource Planning at ACES. Patrick, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Do you prefer Patrick or Pat? Uh, Patrick is good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so first of all, Patrick, um, Executive Director of Resource Planning. That sounds... That sounds high up, hardcore stuff. Why don't you tell me what it is and kind of how you got there? Yeah, so in so the company I work at, Aces, is we work in the like wholesale electric power industry. So resource planning and electric power industry is we're helping utilities determine what power plants they need to build, retire, sell, buy. Etc. So we're trying to help them understand, you know, how are you going to so, you know, serve your customers at the lowest cost to meet all the reliability requirements over a 10, 20, 30 year period. So we're trying to find what's the optimal set of resources. Uh, so we are doing long term portfolio optimization and modeling to come up with as many of the factors we can come up with. Uh, what's happening in the world uh, that could impact uh, utilities and we're forecasting out into the future and then trying to come up with plans that could um, help them understand how to how to serve power at a low cost. Gotcha. So you're kind of a cost saving is the main key there. Yeah, co cost is the main key. Um, nowadays, though, you know, the there's a m large emphasis on environmental uh, attributes. Um, you know, I think more utilities are, are coming to the realization they need to factor in, um, you know, their carbon footprint, you know, in addition to carbon, there's um, NOx and SO2 and all these other uh, particulate matter emissions that are heavily regulated. Um, but that's part of it. And also they're just their impact on the land around them. If they have a coal plant, there's coal ash ponds, and other things like that that they need to factor into the overall decision in addition to cost. And more and more customers are asking for that. Um, a lot of customers are even saying, hey, we're willing to pay even a little bit more um, if we can clean up your your resource plan in that. So, and then, you know, a lot of the large customers, right, you see kind of every day the Amazons, the Googles of that, they want to, you know, serve their electricity with renewable energy uh, so the large customers are demanding it. So cost is kind of the primary driver. Um, but then there are other things like, you know, environmental attributes that we factor in. Okay. Um, so as far as the job that you have now, um, kind of how did you get there and what kind of uh, education um, did you did you have? Yeah. So I went to Wabash College uh, in Crawfordsville, Indiana, uh, studied economics there, and then out of school, I went to straight into ACES. So I got higher entry level position. No knowledge. I didn't even know the electric power industry existed, wholesale power trading and all this stuff. So I, at its core business, ACES kind of started as a trading and operations group, right? So we have real time power traders there 24 7, 365, managing real time operations of power plants, wind farms, coal plants, uh, interacting with what are called independent system operators um, who operate the grid and help power actually flow across the lines at, at the bulk transmission level. And then once it hits the distribution, other companies take it there. But I had, I had no knowledge any of this stuff existed. Um, I had enough yeah, experience with my econ degree, kind of well-rounded um, in a few different other math and quant classes that, you know, I got hired in an entry-level position. I think most of your students, I, you know, as not to jump ahead, but, you know, having a well-rounded experience, whether it's in high school and then once you get to college, I think is helpful, right? It, yeah. Not many employers, and this is true after you know, I kind of got into my career for uh, a while, they're not, they don't expect anybody to come in and be the expert in whatever the field is. They want people who are smart, who work hard and who can learn on the job and they're going to teach they're going to teach you all the industry specific things they just want you to have some you know the, the works the work set and all that there so 
once I was at ACES for eight years. And in that I spent four years in a transmission group. Uh, we were doing, you know, long-term, oops, sorry. <laughs> we're doing uh, long-term um, and, and short-term trading around uh, transmission paths in there. I won't spend a bunch of time on that, but we, we had a lot of time, you know, experience modeling um, and really just kind of learning the industry from the ground up. I think from there, um, I went over to, and traded. Uh, so I jumped into a completely different group, had to learn a brand new set of skills, a different part of the country. That's the other thing. ACEs, we look nationwide. We're based in Carmel, Indiana, but we cover anybody from California all the way east to uh, Delaware and south down to Texas and in the southeast. Uh, so we have to kind of know parts of the entire country in terms of how these different markets and regions operate. I spent four years there and I left ACES after about eight years and went to Indianapolis Power and Light. Uh, there I worked in resource planning, kind of got into that world again. I kind of had enough of the background to where they said, you've never done this before, but we'll take a flyer on you right. and do that. And so i learned kind of a whole new set of skills in a different type of company um, where I got to kind of be on the ground developing long-term resource plan for a large regulated utility. Um, and then this past April, I went back to ACES. ACES was building out long-term resource planning capabilities. In between there, my time in IPL, I got my MBA from IU uh, Kelly School of Business. Oh, so <clears throat> with, um, I guess, was this just a profession that, um, I don't, that you kind of fell into, like you found this job and you're like, oh, actually, this is really interesting or because it doesn't sound like this is something that you went to school and you and you um, looked at because, you know, you said I didn't really even know what the energy trading was or anything like that. So was this just kind of um, serendipitous where you you fell into something? You're like, this is actually really interesting. And I and I can see myself doing this. I would say that's pretty accurate description. Um, I didn't you know, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't have a specific path. I said well, economics, we'll throw in some science, some other things like that. And, you know, trying to figure that out. And it kind of in that last semester is kind of, you know, found aces and said, this looks really cool. Um, what I was looking for was, you know, something that was challenging, something that I could learn a lot. Um, so yeah, it was kind of just by accident. Um, but you know, it kind of helped me understand there's a lot of those companies kind of behind the scenes that you've never heard of right. are doing a lot of cool things. And that's what I've learned, you know, out of the 13 years out of school, you know, you run into people all the time that are just like, Hey, they work for this company, never heard of them, didn't even know their industry existed and that. So, you know, I think obviously the, the big companies, the flashy companies that get a lot of attention, but there's a lot of really, you know, good companies out there you know, in kind of these hidden industries that you don't read about a lot. Right. Um, so you mean to tell me that the Red Sox don't want a left-handed pitcher who throws a 70 mile an hour fastball and leaves the curveball hanging all the time? Um, not really. No, hmm. that's, that's where I thought you were going. So yeah, hey, I touched 82 once. Yeah. Let's be fair. <laughs> the, I was told that the radar on that was a little bit off. Uh, that is right. Yeah. Okay. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> so this is obviously it's it, it's so interesting. I mean, the profession that you just you kind of got a job early and you built on that and and you've just found out uh, you know this is really something that I enjoy. Um, so what are some of the things that you enjoy most about it? And then obviously there are things that everyone um, could do without at their job. So what are some of those things that you don't necessarily like as much? Yeah. So we'll start with the, the good things. I mean, the thing I like the most is it's, I guess, intellectually challenging, right? It's, it's complicated, right? I mean, you know, if I were to go back and say, I want to design my entire educational experience to go into electric power industry, I would be an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, if you're going to work with power plants, but probably electrical engineer, then you can get an MBA later. You can go down that path. I didn't have any engineering, um, none of that. So like there are 
whole components of the industry that I just, I learn about every day that I just don't know and I'll never master it. Um, but that, so I try to focus on my strengths and, and see what I can understand. Um, so, I mean, that's the fun part though, right? I mean, 13 years in, you know, I, I still am coming across things where I'm like, I need to get a book on this or something. Uh, Cause I just, I have no idea, never heard of it. Um, there's a lot of really smart people in the industry that do have engineers and PhDs and that, that are constantly putting out good work and kind of challenging. And um, so I, that's the most fun. And it's also, it's, it's kind of a cool, you know, unique industry. That's what I really liked, especially at the beginning of like, man, I didn't even, like wholesale power trading. Like you think Enron, you think some of that stuff. Um, and it's just, it, there's this certain amount of like, I had no idea this existed. This is really neat. Um, you know, it's power plants as you're talking about climate change These really big things that are going on that you don't read about in the paper. Um, I thought it'd been cool from the downsides. Um, I think one, you know, maybe a couple is, it was a little overwhelming coming in at first when I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, you know, I am not an engineer, like, I, I like I'm just way in over my head, but you just kind of chip away at it through time. I think as you get into it, it can be stressful at times, you know, at, um, you know, at ACEs, if you get in, you're on the, the trading desk, like there's some really stressful times. If the markets say there's a big cold front coming in, you have a power plant and trips off, you get really stressful times uh, on the trading desk. You know, you can, you're pretty much, you can be on call 24 seven, um, you're up late, you know, as I should just move on and get more responsibility. There's just more stress. So some of the kind of stress and like those quick reaction times, um, you know, they're both good and bad, right? You learn from them. You learn a lot about yourself in it, but that's probably the only downside, but it, it's not always that way, right? You can carve your own path in terms of that kind of work-life balance, uh, yeah. as you go forward. Did you, you know, going into electrical, the kind of the electrical field or electricity. Did you have anyone in your family who you talked to about that or who you gleaned any knowledge off of? There was, there was one person that was my grandfather, uh, Francis McGuire, we'll call him Mac, uh, is whatever I call him. And he was, you know, electrician kind of at the, you know, commercial down to like the people putting in wires in homes for 50 years, but he understood everything like immediately. And, he was teaching me stuff about line losses and, and all this stuff. When I first told him, like I first got the job and he was like, Oh, they're probably doing this and this. And um, so it was pretty, pretty amazing how that translates through time. And um, so that, if you're a lifelong learner, uh, you can learn from other people around you. He sounds like a pretty cool guy. He's a pretty cool guy, as you well know. Uh, so in this profession, in the, in your field, um, just how, how would someone, you know, what type of personality you think would be good at it and you can't describe yourself? Um, and what type of personality do you, do you think may not weigh struggle a little bit? Um, I, I would say, you know, in what I do specifically, right. Somebody who does well, who, who likes numbers, right. Could sit there and just pour into something, sit there for, you know, six to eight hours, looking at spreadsheets and numbers, trying to figure out, tell a story through the data. Um, you know, if, if you're not a, a numbers person, you know, whether you just don't like it or like, man, that just sounds like I don't want to sit in front of a desk all day. Um, you know, that, that may be problematic. Um, uh, but Here's what I'll say. I don't sit down in front of a desk and just do that every day, right? It's it's in spits and spurts, right? A big part of what I've had to learn and over time is, is communication, right? How to communicate with clients uh, at IPL. You know, we were communicating with the public, right? Which is a whole other different type of thing. You know, people who are passionate about environmental issues, about, you know, low cost, about different things and coming at just a different level of you know, they don't really necessarily understand all the technical stuff. So you got to communicate to everybody. Um, and, but that's kind of the, the beauty. If you look at a company like a big utility, like IPL, we had, you know, I relied on attorneys, relied on really smart regulatory people like compliance who just could read and write all day long. 
um, who just said, I'll defer to you on all the number stuff. Help me tell a story. We had a communications group. They had to write press releases, you know, and, you know, communication plans and internal stakeholder plans. If we're going to shut down a plant, how do you communicate that, um, you know, to the people who work at the plant? How are you going to communicate that? So while I say like what I do specifically, right, you kind of want a quantitative focus. Um, you know, there's a there's a match, I guess, if you want to be in the space in terms of electric power, or, you know, climate change or anything like that you know, there's a fit for any type of person with depending on your path yeah. and lawyers, the lawyers are always involved. Um, you know, if, if you want to be a lawyer, you always have a job, I guess. Yeah. Those lawyers always seem to kind of always meddle in things. Don't they do. they? Yeah. Just can't, can't get them out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, uh, how, how would someone prepare for the, for this career? I mean, you majored in econ, um, but how would someone do you think if you, if you were looking back maybe at high school, how would you have prepared for this career? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what what path you want to go on. But I I'd take as much math and, and econ and finance as you can. Um, that would certainly help. Um, you know, I think outside of that, you know, there's a lot you can actually read out there kind of now more than ever. Um, a lot of books on the topic. There's a lot of people kind of in the environmental front, but also, you know, there's a lot happening at the United States at the federal level, you know, follow current trends, um, follow legislation that's going to come out, uh, whether it's a clean power plant or carbon tax or what's happened with electric vehicles or that. Just read a lot, read, find as much material as you can on that. And then once you get into college, right, start, you know, finding internships. So I get an IPO, a lot of different companies are doing internships. Um, you know, in Franklin, they're probably served by Johnson County, REMC, you pay, you know, they're part of Hoosier Energy. Um, Hoosier Energy is an owner of ACES, right? Hoosier Energy has a lot of internships. ACES has a lot of internships. Um, you could sit and shadow real-time traders. You could sit and track everything. Um, so that, you know, find internships, get involved and, you know, just stay curious and, and reach out. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get you out of here on this one. Um, besides work on your curveball, uh, what would you, what do you think some, uh, uh, advice that you would have maybe young Patrick McGuire would have gotten or would have liked to have gotten? Um, what's some advice you have for high school students? I mean, focus on as your trend, that transition from high school to college, try to build your study habits and really hit that first semester hard when you get into college. Um, for high school students, you know, try to develop those study habits now because they'll carry through. Um, that's something that, you know, I would say I probably could have done way better um, in terms of procrastination. I think everybody does to an extent, but try to build that now because it's, it's as hard as, you know, you think it is in high school, right? You just start layering on more activities and college is harder. Um, you know, let's do it now in high school, develop the study habits, the work habits. Um, that'll just carry you all the way through. Awesome. Yeah, definitely develop those habits right now. That is important as, uh, as you move on a bit. So uh, once again, Patrick McGuire, thank you for joining me here today. Yeah, thank you for uh reaching out. This has been fun. Yeah. Patrick McGuire, Executive Director of Resource Planning at ACES.